Hello everybody. This is Frankie Day from Frankie Day Models. I decided to go ahead and throw another vid on this thing. It's video number three. As you can see, I got my light on there. It's working. It don't rotate or blink. My brother says I got a little servo to work on that. So that's it's too late. I went ahead and just put it in as I planned on it. Okay, I've got all the fittings on top of the O1 rather levels on the uh, superstructure. I put a wash on it, toned down that white a little bit, using a gray wash. And I added the wash on top of the O1 level. O1 level is complete with the exception of the two lifeboats. I don't know if I should paint them black or yellow or white. I think I'll just go ahead and paint them white. I'm pretty sure quite certain they're white. My biggest sweat with this thing was the South Goodman decals on there. They, they came out beautifully. Just extra insurance, I went ahead and sprayed some decal bonder on there. So they won't uh, disintegrate before my eyes, not be the, a, a world of despair. I had to go out and buy another kit and some decals. In other words, I had to go get me some white stencils and put them on there. That's perfect. That's my biggest sweat. And that's the research on the Trinity South Goodman Lightship. Lightship Vehicle 17. She, she, she was the one that foundered off the, off the, uh, on the Goodman Sands out there. Uh, she broke her moorings. That She's on, on her starboard side laying out there. And there's pieces of her strewn all over the place. Because that's sand out there, you know. A lot, of, a lot of guys said, wow, we got some sand out there. In case we get into some trouble, we could beach this thing. It'll be okay. But it's not okay. Because you got to remember, that thing's out there in the Atlantic Ocean. You got all these waves coming in, all, all, all different areas. And it just, it's like there's lighthouses out there, which are out there in the middle of the rocks out there. And you got the water bashing across it. And that water, the, the ocean is, is very, very, very strong. Very strong, especially the Atlantic. And like I said before, the Atlantic is a very unconscionable, unkind ocean. You know, you know, you don't never know what the hell it's going to do. One day it could be a milk pond, and one day it could be, uh, it could be like, uh, like hell broke loose. And these once in a while do break their moorings. That's why they got about to carry about two or three acres off. In case one gets, if they lose one anchor, they got an auxiliary anchor with another one they can come over. And uh, shackle up to. Light ship building is very lonesome and very hard. It takes a special kind of a sailor. Most sailors, like most light ship sailors, that that love to be a light ship, were whalers. Because a lot of whalers were out for years. They didn't care about coming to shore. They got no family, got nobody but themselves. They didn't know what to do with society or anything. They're sailors. And a light ship is perfect for these guys. They they get themselves signed on a cook, signed as a cook or a deckhand, or a beacon keeper to keep the lights all sh shining, everything in, uh, uh, underway, machinists and everything. And they also make great navigation targets too, as well. On the United States side, the LV one one seven was uh, t boned by the RMS Olympic. I mean, can you imagine that standing out there and watch? He's out of the out of the haze of the fog. They see this big old huge prowl of a steamer coming at you. Dear John, since your saddle home, that's it for you. And there was catastrophes there. A lot of men lost their lives and some survived. As we all know, the North Car and the South Goodwins light ships, Trinity light ships, they had no propulsion. They were towed out, and they have a tiller aft, which you got two men operate that tiller to keep that keep the ship in the wake of the tow. And once they get out there, they drop the anchor over the side. Most of them did use mushroom anchors. Mushroom anchors are the best because you know they're all shaped like mushrooms. And it's not the shape of the mushroom; it's just that that's what it derives its name from. But those mushroom anchors, they're round and they got they got they're concave inside. And it pow hit that sand like that, that mud, and all that mud fills inside that that mushroom, and it's anchors there because of the sediment. And it takes great, great strength. That's why they got a big windlass on this thing to pull that 
anchor out of that settlement. And uh, them things weigh about six to seven tons. They're pretty heavy. They're very, they're, they're very, very, very heavy. And these vessels are very, very strong. I made a crack yesterday about these make good homes lately. I mean, gosh, you know something? Uh, what I've seen on Keith, what I've seen on YouTube, they got a lot of these things laying around for nothing. I mean, they're just withering away. And the guy had a lot of money could make something like that and make a nice home in that thing. And he could open up a bar in there called the Lighthouse Lounge or the, or the uh, I mean, the, the Light Ship Lounge. And uh, you got people need tours up there. To, you can make some money, get your money's back. You know, like I say, if I had a lot of money and it was eccentric to it and uh, with a heartbeat, I'd buy one of these. Two, three million dollars, drop in a bucket. And people say, well, Frankie, that's all well and done and said, and it can be done easily, but where are you going to put the damn thing at? Out in the water where it's supposed to. All you got to do is pay port fees. As long as you're paying, it's like paying a lot, like I do here, this, this here, my here camper right here, I got my trailer I got here. Only thing I pay is utilities, and I pay a lot fee. That's all I pay. This is my light ship I'm sitting in. That's the water out there. I pay my fee. No one can bother me. But like I say, it's food for thought. You know, if you have a lot of money, you know, you could actually even live on board one of these things with great comfort. Because these things are very, very strong, and they don't rust out like normal ships do because they got these special, special metals keep this thing non-corrosive metal so they won't corrode, corrode that bad. They don't corrode as much as others. This is my second build of the South Gubin light ship. I bought two of them. The first one I built there was a bar out there in uh, California, out Seaward, in Ventura. It's called Ted's Lighthouse Lounge. And what could be better to have a light ship like this put it in a bar? So I built that. I seen Ted there. I was, I was in uniform when I built it. I think actually when I bought it, they always called me Bilge Billswater. Bilge Pump. Hey, Bilge Pump, how you doing? Not pretty good. Keeping the bilges dry, guys. Keeping them dry. Because I got something for you. They said, what is that? A Zenit light show? Oh, God, Frank, thank you. This thing looks nice. So they said, it plugs in. And of course, you see the beacon there, lights on there. Came out the same way as this did. So I'm kind of going, it's kind of, it's kind of, this thing is kind of like deja vu to me back in 1970, 71, whatever it was. But like I said, guys, this is a very highly detailed model for a kit that's almost 60 years old. And uh, I'm glad the Ark and the uh, Rail Germany still got this kit. You find these things eBay all over the place. They're, they're on eBay, so that's the only place I know where you can get them at. How much they cost, I don't know. Not any more than anything else is worth there. But like I said, when you shop on eBay, you really got to watch what the hell you're doing. You got to have good trained eyes, and you got to have experience. With that model, you want to buy again all over again. Most people just buy the kit, and you know, and uh, they don't look look at the pictures, parts of it. They got they, they assume that all the parts are are there. They find out they're they're to their their whore, but it's not. Okay. Oh yes. I'm going to work on this last night. This is a, this is a Pyro I, XITC ITC. Now reboxed by Lindbergh and Lindbergh, they don't make it no more. This is a President Wilson. I worked on this last night. I had some flooring, it's smooth, it's nice and smooth and, and uh, gap, gap free. This is the 
president lines. Years ago, back in the 30s, they called the dollar line. I grabbed the only presidential script I have. Outside President Wilson is the is the Calvin Coolidge, President the President Coolidge. That's a blue jacket kit, which is a voucher kit that I inherited from my father. And uh, he uh, gave it to me before he passed away. It was a lot of the stuff that he had. I bought this about about fifteen years ago. So well. If they play with this, I'm gonna jot all the four holes on it. Yeah, I'll do some work on it. To my delight, I find out it's it's one three fifty scale. I was really, really amazed that this thing is one three fifty scale. I figure some kind of a box scale, but these things here are just a little smaller than a than the Arizona. The Arizona would be twenty would be six hundred. This thing is five hundred. Use inches. Use mass. Only three to scale. 20 inch, 20 inches, 21 inches would be 624 feet. And it's right at 18 and a quarter inches. This thing is 500 and so 563 feet. A little thicker than a T3, T2 type oil tanker. That's going to be inside the uh, the fun bill for winter also. A lot of those held present landers, uh, they're used as, as, as troop transports. They call them uh, TAPs, transport attack personnel, auxiliary personnel. Uh, I was on about four of those, uh, MSTS, United States NS, which is United States Naval Service, which is Navy owned, but manned by civilian, by merchant marines. I remember my father summons my mother and me and my brothers and sisters when he was overseas. Uh, like, I think he was, we lived in Hawaii, we lived in Japan, we lived in the Philippines, we lived in Singapore, Guam, and uh, Bank, uh, not, not Thailand, but another, uh, let's see, Shandies. What other place out there? But the Marshall Islands. There was naval installation out there. And I seen the world, guys. I was very, very blessed that I, I, I was a traveling kid, you know, I was naval, being a naval dependent and everything, being my father, you know, and stuff. And, Yeah, I traveled all the world, and those ships were on. I was on the uh, the USNS uh, TAP one seventeen, the uh, USS the, 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 the Squire, the General Squire, the General Pope, General Patrick, the General William L. Moore. The present line of ships like that. This one here came out in nineteen forty eight. President Wilson came out in 48, but by 1948, she wasn't in merchant colors. She was all United States Navy colors. But she had the black, gold, and blue band on the funnels. It symbolizes its MSTS, Military Sea Transportation Service. So I was thinking about going ahead instead of making that the civilian version, I can make that the naval version and make a, make a TAP out of it. 
But the Wilson, but the President Wilson and the citizenship was the President Cleveland, Grover Cleveland. They both had such the decal citizenships. They were kind of a cruise ship for the day, back in the nifty 1950s. Okay, guys, that's all I got to show you. A look at my. Uh, I call Veru. I'll take about working on that tonight, maybe. Have a lot of action on that. Oh, this thing weighs about three, four pounds. I'm putting up my lead in this thing, give it some weight. And I'll be working on my tuna clip for two this evening. I got plenty of time for that Fletcher. Right now, I'm kind of rotating around, see what I can get done the quickest, but without mistake of bath, I think I'm done tomorrow, fellas. So, so prepare for the final reveal for the South Goodwin Light Ship tomorrow. And the next day, it will be on the uh, tuna clipper, how that done. That'll be, that'll be work on the, on the, on the Wilson. Okay, guys, that's all i got to do today. So this concludes the video three, Coffee with Frankie. A day with the South Goobin light ship. Everything's safe. You might as well just uh, get on the way and get back to port. Okay, guys, uh, make mama happy. Take care of the little ones. Stay focused and drive. Be aware of your surroundings. Spend wisely. And take care of yourself. I love you fellas. You guys take care of yourself. I'd like to thank all my subscribers, all my viewers, all my new subscribers. And thank you very much for all your wonderful candid comments and everything I get from you all. And I very deeply, deeply, it, it makes me feel good. It's the heart and the soul. From you all to us, me. I love you guys. Make mama happy. Say your prayers. Take care of yourself, and we'll see you in the next video. That'd be the final reveal for the Trinity Lightship South Goodwood Sands Lightship LV17. Stay prepared for that, guys. God bless you, fellas. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, boys.